yeah hello so now our topic is going to be quite fun so the topic is morphology of flowering plants Yeah, right. So morphology. So coming to this part, morphology is the branch of biological sciences that deals with the study of form, size, color, structure, and relative position of various parts. And relative position of various parts so morphology is nothing but study study of size form structure all those things we called as morphology so what is the importance of morphology why do we need to study the mor morphology the very first thing is identification first thing we need to do is identification of plants we need to identify what plant is that what kind of root system will be there? <clears throat> so next thing is variation. So we have to know variations among the species. And next, deficiency and toxic symptoms are morphological changes that you can see in response to shortness, shortage of excess minerals. So we can identify the deficiencies. So coming to the parts of flowering plants. So let's begin. So coming to the parts of flowering plants. You may have this. And we have the flowers. Now let's see. So we have the root system. So this is the root system. The root coming directly from the radical, which is primary root. And the branches coming from the primary root is said to be secondary root. So this entirely we call it as the root system. And next we have the shoot system. So this is the shoot system. So we have the flower. fruit, leaf, and stem. So these are all the things will come under 
angiosperms, the parts of the flowering plants. Okay, so all of all the flowering plants have roots, stem, leaves, flower, and fruits. They undergrow the part of flowering parts. So the underground part of the flowering parts is root system, and the aerial part of the flowering uh, plants is shoot system. So first and foremost, we are going to see the roots. So before going this, so let's have the very short thing. So we have a regions for the root actually. So let's mark it. And this part, we call it as this here, we have root cap. So this is the root cap. And this is the region of meristem. And this is the region of elongation. And this is the region of maturation. With root hairs. So let's see the root. So we have the dicotyledonous elongation of radical. So what is this radical is? So let's see the seed part. In the dicotyledon seed, we have the center axis. So the axis which is present below, we call it as radical. Usually the dicotyledonous root is elongation of the radical, which we call it as the primary root. It bears lateral roots and several other secondary roots also. The root which is coming directly from the radical is the primary root. So the branches of the primary root is secondary root. The branches of the secondary root is the ter tertiary root likewise. So primary root along with lateral roots, all together we, we will be calling it as tap root system. Example, uh, mustard. So mustard is a tap root. And because it is dicotyledon and gram, these are also dicotyledons having tap root system. So in usually in monocotyledons, so for dicots, it is tap root system. Usually it is taproot. For monocots, it is fibrous root system. So in monocotyledons, the primary root is replaced by larger number of roots, which is present from the base of the stem. If you can see for coconut, for banana, so these are monocots for rice plants. So wheat, rice are the fibrous root system. And we have one more root system that is adventitious root system. Coming, uh, the roots emerge from the other than the radical. The roots emerge other than or beside the radical. So this we call it as adventitious root system. Example for adventitious roots is grass, banyan, which you have the prop roots, maize, stilt roots, sugarcane, stilt roots, etc. The main functions of the root system is absorption of water. So the roots is mainly meant for water and mineral absorption. And uh, another function is anchorage of the plant body to the ground. Anchorage. And next thing is some special modifications or uh, modifications of the root system is storing of reserve food material.
storing of reserve reserve food materials so coming to the regions we'll go back to the regions now so in the regions so the apex of the root is covered by thimble like structure called root cap it protects the tender apex and while making through the soil above the root cap we have region of meristem so this is mainly for meristematic activity having small cells with dense cytoplasm and this is the region of elongation where the cells will undergo elongation and enlargement to so the increase in length of the root is mainly in this area and region of maturation contain root hairs that helps for absorption of water and minerals because it increases the surface area for absorption obviously so let's go with the modifications the modifications are said to be the special functions done by the roots other than the normal functions we call it as modifications so let's see the modifications so one thing regarding modifications we have storage nitrogen fixation aeration and support first thing we'll see storage for storage it is carrot radish beetroot carrot which is docus carota radish rafanus sativus beta vulgaris and we have the turnip so these are storage main, mainly meant for storage and support manian So banyan, uh, this is we have the prop roots. Banyan, we have the prop, and maize and sugar cane is still roots. And next for aeration. So for aeration, it is nematophores. here we have the rhizophora example so you have the same terminology like rhizophora rhizobium and rhizopus rhizopus is fungus from here uh, here itself i am telling rhizopus this is fungus phycomycetes will comes under this is fungus rhizobium bacteria so don't get confused and rhizophora rhizophora is tree so coming to the shape the carrot so the carrot is conical in shape so see for see conical and radish it which is fusy form in shape fusy form means you will be having uh, tapering both the ends and center it will be bulged this is fusy form and beetroot and turnip are nappy form we call that as nappy form roots and next we'll go with the next part that is stem modification so stem so it is the ascending part of the axis which bears the branches leaves so we have the branches leaves flowers and fruits 
So the stem will be mainly developed from plumule of the embryo. So stem bears nodes and internodes. We have the nodes and internodes. Mainly the leaves are born, uh, the portion called nodes. So, and the region between two nodes, we call it as internodes. The main function of the stem is bearing leaves, flowers, and fruits, and conducts water and minerals. Conducts water and minerals. From root to leaves and product mainly for photosynthesis. So, we have uh, leaves for photosynthesis. And the stem also done some special functions such as storage of the food, the food storage. Support. Protection. And vegetative propagation. So coming to the modifications of root. So in the root modifications, we have three things. Underground, so underground, sorry, stem modifications. We have underground stem modification, subaerial stem modification, and finally, aerial stem modifications. So let's go with the uh, underground. So the underground stem modifications are so we have the rhizome. So rhizome is the underground stem modification which is mainly meant for storage of the food. So examples such as uh, ginger, Turmeric, which grows horizontally and that is the mainly meant for storage of the food. Next, we have the com. Com is such as colocasia, yam. So, what is the main difference between rhizome and com is the rhizome uh, will be horizontal growth. And COM will be vertical, vertical growth. That was the main reason for rhizome and COM, the differentiation. And we have the tuber. For tuber, it is potato. So potato consists of eye structures. So which is, you can see like this. So this is the node and this is the reduced leaf. This is part we call it as eye, which is vegetative propagule. And so these are modified for food storage. They also act as an organ of perination and on unfavorable conditions. Next, uh, we have the subaerial. We'll go with the other thing. Subaerial. Subaerial, we have uh, runners. So strawberry, which is a runner. Sucker, stolen, and offset. So runner is like when the branch is coming from parallel to the ground, parallel to the ground, and when it touches us at some other place and leads to development of roots and shoot system, that we call it as the runner, such as strawberry, Lawn grass, sucker. So when we have a plant, when the branch is coming from the from coming from the stem, which is underground, this we call it as the sucker. So example for sucker is pineapple, banana. 
क्रैशांतिम सो वि हेव द पार्ट ऑफ द ब्रांच पार्ट ऑफ द स्टेम विच इज अंडर ग्राउंड फ्रॉम देयर इट द ब्रांच गोज टूवर्ड्स एरियली दिस वी कॉल इट एज सकर्स एंड स्टोलन सो वॉट इज अ स्टोलन इज वी हेव ए प्लांट एंड द ब्रांच अरेज from here the base part of the stem and it ascends up and goes down here you will be getting the roots all those things again the plant will develop this we call it as stolen example for stolen is jasmine mint next offset we have a rosette like leaf appearance so rosette like leaf will be developed at one point and you have the clinging roots sorry feathery roots and you have a shorter branch again you have this offset so this is usually seen in uh, plants such as aquatic plants pistia ecornia which is terror of bengal so if in any case this offset was been broken both can survive as an individual plant so mainly this aerial modification is meant for unfair, meant for vegetative propagation next finally aerial so we have uh, stem is modified into tendrils so which is which will be coiling to the support cucumber pumpkin grapes and or axillary buds may be modified into pointed uh, thorns example citrus bougain willi bougain willi and we have the cladophils or phylloclades or phylloclades so the stem is modified into leaf like uh, structure leaf like cylindrical structure so which we call it as phylloclade Pansia, Euphorbia, and mainly will undergo chlorophyll for synthesis. And we have one more modification also, which is uh, uh, underground modification. Forgot that underground stem modification that is bulb. So this bulb is. you can see for onion and garlic the entire stem will be condensed as a disc so that is one more thing with bulb and next we'll go with the other thing that is leaf modifications so before going into the leaf modification let's see so let's see the parts of the leaf first so the leaf is the green dissimilar uh, exogenous laterally flattened outgrowth which is born on the node of the stem so this is mainly meant for photosynthesis so coming to the leaf it is arranged in usually arranged in acropetal order so it consists of leaf base we call this part let's see we call this part as leaf base and this is a petiole 
and we have this stipules. Like this extensions we have for flower, then we have to call it as uh, bracts. And this is the lamina or leaf blade. So, and here we have the axillary bud. So these are the parts of the leaf. So, and we have the middle prominent midrib. So this is the midrib. And we have the veins and veinlets. So all together, midrib, veins and veinlets, we call it as venation. So this is mainly for conduction of water and minerals. So coming to the different types of venation. We have two venation. One is reticulate venation. Another one is parallel venation. So veinlets will form a network. That's why we call it as reticulate venation. This is reticulate venation, whatever we are seeing in this picture. Coming to parallel venation, you'll be having the leaf like this. Obviously, you'll be having a midrib and all the veins will run parallel to this midrib. So this is parallel venation. This is usually seen for monocots. So usually dicots will have reticulate venation, gram, pea, bean, mango, and grass, banana, rice, etc. are parallel venation. And let's see about the types of leaves. Types of leaves. So we have majorly uh, two types of leaves. Simple leaf, compound leaf, and next two categories. Pinnately compound, palmately compound. So coming to the simple leaf, a leaf with only undivided lamina. So what we have seen, this, this is a simple leaf. The incision are not getting into the midrib. Example, mango, goa are simple leaf. So compound leaf, what is a compound leaf is when the incisions are touches the midrib and the leaves will be transformed into smaller leaflets. The lamina will be transformed into smaller leaflets, which we call it as Compound leaf. So what I'm drawing is pinnately compound leaf. So because incisions are being uh, touching the midrib and this common axis, we call it as ratchets. And these are leaflets. And you don't have any buds in the axile of the leaflets. So this is pinnately compound neem. And we have the palmately compound leaf. So, palmately compound leaf, you have the petiole. On the tip of the petiole itself, we have the leaves. This is palmately compound leaf. Silk cotton. Example is silk cotton. And what is phyllotaxy? So, phyllotaxy in the sense, the arrangement of the leaves on the stem, we call it as phyllotaxy. We have three types of phyllotaxy. First thing is opposite phyllotaxy. We have the leaf. The leaves are arranged. Sorry, uh, this is alternate phyllotaxy. Opposite phyllotaxy will be this. So this is alternate phyllotaxy. This is opposite phyllotaxy. This is broad phyllotaxy, okay? So the alternate phyllotaxy, the single leaf arises at each node. So this is alternate phyllotaxy, China rose. And opposite phyllotaxy, you can see exactly at the opposite sides, the leaves will arrange, arrange. And this is Goa. And next we have the broad phyllotaxy. At, one, at, the, at the node itself, we have the brawl of leaves. 
example alstonia so alstonia this is goa and this is china rose and next we have the tendrils so which is a modified part of the leaf mainly used for climbing so tendrils we have the peas example spines are seen uh, in the leaf for cactus which is mainly for defense and let's see the next thing that is inflorescence what is this inflorescence inflorescence is arrangement of flowers on floral axis is termed as inflorescence there are two main inflorescence one is racemos and other one is cymos so what is racemos and what is cymos in the racemos the floral axis will grow indefinitely they won't stop in cymos the floral axis will be converted into a flower so here in racemos the older flowers will be originated in the bottom so the new flowers will be going towards the top so this type of arrangement we call it as acropetal arrangement you can see here acropetal this is acropetal the quite opposite will be cymos the older flowers will be on the top the new flowers will be there in the bottom to see the arrangement it will be like cone so this type of arrangement we call it as basi petal arrangement so you can see this acro petal arrangement for radish mustard and this arrangement for jasmine and bougainvillea next we'll go with the next part so that is flower the flower flower is considered as the reproductive part of the angiosperm plant mainly meant for sexual reproduction and coming to the parts of the flower this is the bracts if the flower have bracts then we call it as bractate if the flower have don't have any bracts we call it as e bractate and this is the peduncle and this is the thalamus calyx the individual parts of the calyx is sepals and we have the corolla the individual parts we call it as petals and we have this anthers androecium 
So andresham consists of stamens. So the stamens usually consists of two things. So this is filament and this is anther. So this anther we call it as bilobed and tetrathecus anther. So the anther will be like this, bilobed and tetrathecus anther. And we have the gynesium, which is the carpels. Stigma, style, and we have the ovary part. Inside the ovary, we have the placenta. To the placenta, ovules will get attached. So the flowers may be unisexual, such as papaya, bisexual, such as mango, goa. And when flowers divide into two equal parts, we, if we can divide, coming to the symmetry, there are two types of symmetry. First thing is asymmetrical. Another thing is symmetrical. So if you cannot divide the flower into two equal parts at any plane passing through, then we call the flower as asymmetrical. When we can divide the flower into two equal parts, when uh, with uh, we can if we can divide the flower into two equal parts, then we call it as symmetrical. We have two types: actinomorphic and zygomorphic. Actinomorphic is like radial symmetry. You can divide the flower into any plane passing through. You can divide the flower into two equal parts. And here you can divide the flower into two equal parts with only one plane passing through. So this is like a biradial or bilateral symmetry. So you can see the radial symmetry in Datura, mustard, chili. And zygomorphic, uh, you can able to see for P, Gulmar, Cassia, etc. And next, we have the floral appendages also, such as uh, we have trimerous. We have three or multiples of three petals and sepals. Trimerous, tetramerous, four or multiples of four. Pentamerous, five or multiples of five. So if the flowers with bracts, we call it as bractate. If without bracts, we call it as e-bractate. So coming to the floral position, position of ovary with respect to the floral parts. So the flowers are being divided into three categories. So here we have Hypogynous. This is based on position of ovary with respect to the floral parts. So the floral parts are present at the base of the ovary. So floral parts are present at the base of the ovary. Uh, but the ovary will be superior here. For so hypogynous, the ovary is superior. And next we have the example is Mustard, brinjal, china rose, and perigynous. If the gynesium is situated at the center, and the other parts is at the rim. We call that as perigynous. So you have to be like uh, the floral parts has to be in the mid of the ovary. So that's why we call this ovary as half inferior or half superior. Both are same. You can call it as half inferior or half superior. 
because the floral parts are present at the rim of the ovary and next epigynous the floral parts are present on above the ovary so the ovary will be inferior so this is one thing and next thing is about calyx calyx is the outermost whorl of the flower it members we call it as sepals they are generally green uh, leafy and protect the flower in bud stage so if it is uh, sepals are united then it is gamosepalous if sepals are uh, free then it is polysepalous next corolla corolla is the petals which is brightly colored and that is mainly meant for attraction of insects for pollination they are also we have corolla if if uh, the petals are united then it is gamopetalous if the petals are free then it is polypetalous next thing is aestivation aestivation what is this aestivation aestivation is nothing but the mode of arrangement of the sepals or petals in floral buds with respect to the other members of the same whorl we call it as aestivation we have uh, four different types of aestivation so this we call it as volvate aestivation so here what it is there is the whorl of petals and sepals will touch each other for example we have uh, calotropis and next we have the volvate aestivation so this is volvate aestivation this is volvate and next we have the twisted aestivation which is in china rose so the whorls will overlap on each other this is a volvate or sorry twisted aestivation and next we have the margins will overlap with each other but it is not in a particular fashion so such type of aestivation we call it as imbricate gulmar and next in the pea and bean flowers we have uh, vexillary aestivation so you will be having one big petal so the largest standard uh, petal will be there that overlaps the lateral wing petals and finally in turn will overlaps the two smallest anterior petals so this type of aestivation we call it as vexillary aestivation and these flowers are also zygomorphic flowers you can only divide the flower with one plane passing through so this petal name is keel so this petal name is wing petals this is also wing next it is about androsium androsium which is a present the male reproductive part of the flower consists of stamen each stamen consists of a filament and we have the anther which is bilobed usually the pollen grains are produced inside the pollen sac and we have the sterile stamen when snow production of pollen grain we call it as a steaminode when stamens are attached with petals then we call it as epipetalous such as brinjal
and some stamens are free. Then we call this as polyandrous. Some stamens are united into one bundle. Then we call it as monoandrous, monoadelphous, sorry, monoadelphous. Some are in two bundles called diadelphous. Some are more than two, then we call it as polyadelphous. Next thing is gynesium. Gynosium. So the female reproductive part of the flower consists of one or more carpels. Each carpel is made up of, uh, we have the stigma, style, and we have the ovary, placenta, and ovules. So for more than one carpel is present and the carpels are free, then we call it as apocarpus. Example in lotus. So lotus is an apocarpus. And if it is free, then we call it, a, sorry, if it is fused, then we call it a syncarpus such as tomato and mustard. Apocarpus is lotus in which the, all the carpels are free. If it is fused, then it is syncarpus. So tomato and mustard. So after fertilization, the ovules will form into seeds. Ovary to fruit. So next thing is placentation. So what is this placentation? Placentation is arrangement of ovules within the ovary. We call it as placentation. So we have marginal placentation. So the placenta will be forming like a ridge and the ovules are attached to that ridge. So we call this as marginal presentation. Example, pea plant. And next we have the axile placentation. So we have the septa, center we have placenta. And to this uh, multilocular ovary, the seeds are attached in the center of the placenta. Example, we have citrus, tomato. And next. And next we have this uh, parietal presentation, papaya. So you will be having uh, inner wall of the ovary, the seeds will be attached. This is parietal presentation. And next free, action, free central presentation. This in the center we have the placenta, there is no any septa. So to this, the for example, such as kiwi fruit, which is free central placentation. And dianthus, which is also free central placentation. And finally, we have the basal placentation, marigold. So base of the ovary, we have the placenta and one ovule will be there. One ovule will be there inside that ovary. This placentation, we call it as the basal placentation.
and next coming to fruits so the mature and ripened ovary developed after fertilization is fruit so matured ovary it is the fruit formed without fertilization we call it as parthenocarpic fruit example banana which has more commercial value so the fruit consists of so the fruit consists of these parts we have all together we call it as pericarp the outer layer of pericarp is epicarp for example for mango it is epicarp mesocarp is fleshy and endocarp endocarp is stony all together we call it as pericarp and inside this we have the seed so this is dicot so two cot laid in a seed and let's see the parts of the seeds so seed seed is nothing but the embryo so seeded plants are uh, gymnosperms and angiosperms so let's draw something like this we have this hilum sorry so this we call it as hilum and this is uh, micropyle through which the water will enter during seed germination and these are cotyledons and here we have the plumule and this is the radical all together the entire part we call it as embryonical axis so coming to the next part uh, this is dicotyledonous seed and monocotyledonous seed is like this we have the endosperm here also we have this two things we have the plumule radical and here we have coleoptile and we have the coleorhiza and this is the scutellum and these are the parts of the seed and dicotyledonous seed is made up of seed coat we have the seed coat also here and embryonic axis and radical plumule and the two cotyledonous so the outer layer we call it as testa and the inner layer is stigmen and we have the hilum the scar we call it as hilum through which the seed will be attached to the ovary and we have a small pore uh, through which the water will enter during germination this is micropyle and in monocotyledonous seed also it have a outer covering of endosperm it is separated by a proteinaceous layer which we call it as uh, aleuron layer aleuron sorry aleuron layer and we have the single cotyledon called the scutellum and we have the plumule radical plumule is closed by coleoptile 
radical is closed by polio rhiza so this is all about the discussion on the parts of the stem stem root stem leaves flower fruit seed okay so i hope uh, see the, i somehow this help this video helped you thanks a lot